M0FXB, welcome to my channel. So the Yaesu FT5 hasn't been out long and they've brought out some new firmware. So I haven't really looked at this at all. So here we are on the Yaesu page and we've gone to the files section and we've scrolled down and we've hit the FT5. We've got the instruction manual downloaded here. Going to have a real good read of that. And then we've got the actual files needed to update the firmware for the main band and the sub band and also there's the US USB installation required as well <clears throat> so let's um, have a here's the uh, instruction manual we will go through it I'm just gonna have a quick look at the files so I haven't really looked at so we've got the program see the first one FT5 main version that's the sort of program that updates the the main band then you've got the one underneath for the sub band and I'm guessing that could be USB. I haven't really opened it, but I will open it. Uh, and then some other stuff here as well. So again, I'm learning. I'm <clears throat> just a ham trying to uh, uh, do the update. So let's have a quick look through. Now I've done it on the FT3D. So the first part just covers, it gives you some information and just some warnings that you do this at your own risk and you could risk uh, breaking the radio basically and the requirements for the PC and an overview here now if you want to test if you want to have a look what firmware you've got just turn the radio on um, hold down the F menu key and go to display and rotate the dial and select at the bottom software version and you'll see main sub and DSP and I think my main is at the moment saying 1.01 .01 and 1.01 .01, and I think the DSP is 7.11 possibly <clears throat> so I'm just reading through the instructions at this point I will do the firmware update uh, but not during this this video then you've got this update thing about making sure you've got service pack 1 I've done all this for the FT3 uh, I've got Windows 10 so all this all this has been done so read through it if you need to do it then follow these instructions step by step very important step by step um, okay, so once you've got to that point, then we get to the point of actually installing the um, the driver. <coughs> so double click the main file, uh, which looks like this, and you will get a window. And at the bottom left, it says a USB driver install. Now, if you've never ever done the update before, then double click this and it will install it for you. So let's move on to the next section. When updating the firmware of this model for the first time, install it. Yeah, we just said that. Install the driver. And click install and it will add it in for you. Just go next. Accept the terms. Remember, you, this is risky if you're not following instructions correctly. And then finish button. You've got your, your uh, driver installed. Right, so now it's saying switch Next, prepare the device you want to update. So switch the device you want to update to program writing mode. After switching mode, connect the device to your computer using a USB cable. Now the cable comes in the box, that's the one you use. Press the next button. It returns the Yesu firmware update screen. Follow, follow updating the firmware. Then we just go to next. Checking and updating the USB driver. So when the power of the FT5 is on, press and hold power, switch to turn it off. Remove the battery pack and the AC adapter from the transceiver. Move the three position program switch of the FT5 so you can see it. You know, on the side, uh, you've got to take off the rubber thing or pull it back. You'll see where the cable plugs in. And if it's flicked up, it's the main firm firmware. The middle position is normal. I would use like a like a toothpick or something, something that's not going to damage the radio. And if you go down, it is the, the sub firmware. But what, this, is, this section is about the main firmware. Okay. Da -da -da -da. Right, okay. <clears throat> Use the supply cable. We know that. It's in the box. Connect it to your PC. Sorry about my cough. <clears throat> Connect the AC adapter to the wall outlet and then insert the DC plug to the FT5DE in jack. Okay, so we're connecting it. As far as I can see, the radio is off. Open the computer device manager to verify that the driver has been successfully 
install of the computer, confirm generic boot USB appears. So if you've done it correctly, put the power in. I'm guessing you do have to turn on. But I'm not going to say turn it on. I'm just following these instructions. So you put the power in the outlet. You plug in the DC cable. There's power going into the radio. Yeah, but at this point, I'm not saying turn it on. Just wait. Open the computer device manager to verify that the driver has been successfully installed on the computer. Confirm. Generic, generic boot USB appears under Renaissance USB development tools. So this is what you're looking for. Renaissance USB development tools. Generic boot USB. So if this hasn't appeared, then you haven't done it correctly. And then important notice. USB boot mode device appears in the universal serial bus controller as shown in the device manager. The PC will incorrectly recognize the driver. So what they're basically saying is, um, is if it doesn't show what you're seeing here, it's all installed an automatic sort of uh, driver, but it'll be the wrong one. That's no good. It has to say this. Very, very important. Renaissance USB. So scroll up. Updating the firmware. The main firmware update procedure is shown below as an example for purpose of explanation. And then it says the sub firmware. So you've got the files already extracted in a folder on your PC. Double click the main file, which is the one on the left. You click yes. And we've already done the USB driver, so we don't have to do that again. And now we want to be looking for the COM port. So when you right click, and select device manager where it says the bit about Ren now, it won't show it on mine yet uh, the Renesis thing because I haven't done this yet um, you want to look for the which COM port number is there so if we just quickly go back uh, if we double click that bit you'll see the COM port number so let's go down so you select the correct COM port the board rate it's not telling me which board rate so we'll learn that when we actually do the update <clears throat> so the update preparation procedure appears make the ft5dd ready for update so before updating make sure the following procedure so remove the battery pack from the transceiver remove the data terminal cover on the right side surface of the transceiver change the program switch next to the data terminal to the main cpu right mode so up Connect the transceiver to your PC using the cable in the box. Connect the AC adapter to the transceiver to supply power. So that tells me that the power is on, but not the radio. After the preparation procedure, press the OK button. So you click OK, and when the power of the FT5 is on, when the power of the FT5DR is on, press and hold power. So, um, all right, so when you plug it in, it will turn it on turn it off remove the battery pack follow the caution below um, and use a pointed object such as a pin to change the position of the thing so there it is again pushing it up uh, use the supply cable to connect the ft5de connect the ac adapter to a wall outlet and then insert the dc plug to the ft5 like so on the yesu update program press ok so it's all repeating it um, same list here of things to do follow that through click OK and this time you're going to see this <clears throat> and it says main. see it says main click OK and it will start to install it and when it's installed it will say firmware is complete okay now the post procedure so after you've done it disconnect the AC adapter from the transceiver Disconnect the cable connected to the data terminal. Change the program switch to normal operation mode. Attach the cover. Connect the AC adapter to the transceiver. Perform an all reset. And check, check the version number. So in the video, when I do the firmware, I'll show you how to do an all reset as well. Disconnect the AC adapter. You're disconnecting everything. And then you're putting it back into normal mode. And then connect the AC adapter to the FT5DE jack. Press and hold the power switch to turn on. That's when all, all reset will be executed. You'll hear a beep and a call sign input guidance. Press the F menu key. The call sign input appears. Press the PTT. And so it definitely makes sense that you do a backup of your radio before you do any of this. Press and hold the power off. And it's just repeating the whole thing again. Update program screen. 
firmware program, when the transceiver becomes inoperable, now there's some stuff you can do here. Have a read of that. Uninstall the ASU firmware. Yeah, so there's some more information there if there's problems. So that's it. So you've got the main and the US and the sorry, the main and the sub that you can do. When you, when you do the sub, you flick it down. The switch goes down. So um, read these instructions. I'm not telling you how to do this. You've got to do this for yourself. I'm just telling you it's available. I've read it out. Uh, I'm learning myself. Uh, so you do it at your own risk. Uh, but yeah, there, this is the firmware that's available. What they're not really saying is what this firmware has added and what changes have been added. There's a firmware update. It's not showing why. Let's have a look here. Unless it says it here. If there is some literature on the firmware update, let me know so we know why we're actually doing this. So 7.3 and thanks for watching. All the best.